After nine long years, George Miller returns to the wasteland to do a prequel film to Fury Road called Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. Not sure if it was necessary to throw a Mad Max saga at the end there, as he may be going to tell more stories in this world. Who knows? But the real question today is, how is this one? Well, I'm going to let you know in a spoiler-free review right now. Before I jump into the review, could you witness me by hitting the subscribe button? I would appreciate it. I post movie reviews every single week on the channel, sometimes roasts, sometimes just straight up rants, but it's always a good time, I can assure you. A couple little factoids to kick things off, Furios is rated R. It's almost two and a half hours long, features a good amount of violence, some swearing, occasional blood splatter here and there, occasional decapitation, short for decapitation, and it's all around a glorious time. The over two hour runtime for an action film scares the crap out of me, especially coming off of Fury Road, which was very, very light on story. Uh, arguably too light <laughs> on the story. But that's not Furiosa. It actually takes good use of that runtime. Sure, you could have chopped some of it off here and there. There's, there's some slow builds to things, but I have no complaints. In fact, I could have spent more time in the wasteland. I could have spent more time with Furiosa and her plight and her character struggle and her revenge arc because that's really what this is. It's a revenge tale. One that's gonna span many years starting with the young Furiosa and her mother. In fact, Anya Taylor-Joy is all over the marketing for this, but we spend the first third of this film with Alila Brown, who is the young version of Furiosa, and she does a freaking great job. I like this actress in Sting, and here she is again proving that she's got what it takes to be in the industry. I think for the most part, outside of Max, you go to a Mad Max movie for the action. While we don't have the Max aspect, what do we have? Well, we got the action, folks, and there is a lot of it. We also have a really fun antagonist with Chris Hemsworth playing a character that's not himself for once. He's got the fake nose, he's got a little bit of his accent kicking in. But I like that there is some actual layer to this character. It's not a lot, but it's enough to get you on board with where things are going. If I could pop the clutch and circle back around to my previous statement though, I don't even know if I used that term correctly, but it doesn't matter. I'm not a car guy, okay? But it was awesome seeing all these cars ripping through the desert, motorcycles going over sand dunes, explosions up the wazoo. You got that big oil rig battle bus thing back again, and they really go for broke this time. I feel like George Miller took all the ideas he had for Fury Road but couldn't make happen, and he put them into this movie. There is an extended action sequence that lasts for what felt like 20 minutes straight, car chasing, going after this big rig, and it was freaking balls to the wall, nonstop awesomeness. And I just sat there thinking, holy shit, these stunts are out of this world. How do they film this? This looks great. And there's gonna be the negatives, of course. It looks like a cartoon, it's too CGI filled. That, I, I don't know. That's fair in an extent. I remember seeing the trailers and thinking, oh man, this got way too cartoonish. That didn't play out for me in the final product. Now, it is definitely stylized, and that's going to throw people, and they're going to say it looks fake. But Fury Road was very stylized as well. The colors are overpronounced. There is this larger-than-life world being shown. I mean, the mountains scale like ridiculous heights. There's all sorts of wild stuff going on. But I think within the context of the story, within this world, the effects, the look of everything lands 99% of the time. There are a few moments where some of the shots are dicey. There's a really poor green screen early on in the picture when the mom and daughter are going through a cave. It looked terrible. But that's a very small little gripe and moment in an otherwise beautiful looking production. And there are some amazing shots in this film. Wide scale shots, close encounters, it's got it all, it really does. I don't know how you could go from Fury Road, loving that movie, which I did, um, and then hating this one. Unless of course you just don't like Furiosa, in which case, wh why would you go to it to begin with? You've already kind of made up your mind ahead of time. But I think Anya Taylor-Joy, I think Alila Brown, they really knocked it out of the park with these characters and really everyone else, all the supporting roles were great too. I saw this on the biggest screen I could, which unfortunately is a regal by me and that's all I have to work with. But I highly recommend seeing this one in theaters if you are an action buff, if you like the stunts, you're going to get all of that here for sure. 
Initially, when it was announced that Furiosa was getting her own spin-off movie, I was bummed that Charlize Theron wasn't coming back. I loved her in the role. I thought she's the reason that movie works so well. I thought she kind of stole the movie in Fury Road, mainly because Tom Hardy was behind a mask for 80% of it, which kind of sucked. But I equally like Anya Taylor-Joy, so it wasn't too hard of a loss. And it makes sense now that I see this story play out, when I see the movie and how this character is definitely aging from a little kid growing up. It's a good natural progression. Typically with reviews, I try to weigh the pros and cons, tell people what worked for me, but also just what to expect in general, because I know my taste isn't the be all end all. I know that everybody has their own subjective opinions on things, but just from a matter of fact standpoint, the movie's a little long, but I didn't feel it, you might. The movie has a ton a ton of action, there's, there's no denying that. The movie has a huge spectacle, larger than Fury Road. If you wanted something smaller scale, this is not the movie for you. It's a saga, it is definitely a large sweeping story that spans decades. It's not gonna be a contained chase scene for an hour and a half, two hours. There are some kind of intense, gory moments. I was never like grossed out. This isn't terrify your stuff by any means, but there are a couple maybe wincy moments that you might not wanna watch. I didn't find anything too uh, offensive or over the top considering the world we're in. Let's put it this way. If you could get through Fallout, the TV series, nothing in this movie is worse than that. Nothing's more intense than you saw in that show. But this is the type of movie I love to go to. This is a movie that should be seen on the big screen unless you just have a perfect setup at home, a huge TV, blasting surround sound, pitch black scenario with no family ruining anything for you, then sure, wait till it comes out. But I highly recommend going to this one, especially if you like the Mad Max movies. I don't think you're gonna be disappointed. I went in a little a little hesitant, a little trepidatious, but I came out on the other side a believer. Uh, Furiosa won me over, and hopefully it's the same for you. All right, let me know if you saw this movie, or if you're planning on seeing it, or maybe you weren't, but now I, I pushed you in the right direction. Let me know in the comments below. Please like the video, subscribe again. Just just witness me by hitting the subscribe button, grab that uh, silver paint, spray it all over, and then, then tag that subscribe button. And hopefully I see you next time. All right, take care.